already when I was 10 years and 11 years, I was walking sometimes by myself in this direction towards the mountain. Already then, I looked upon this mountain as a kind of benevolent great father. So I somehow interpreted it as equanimity, that it, far inside here it's completely hard, not harmony is too strong a word, but at least you are in balance. There's a balance inside here, and this big mountain, this great mountain, I mean, seems to be such an entity, so it was alive for me. And therefore I decided I sh the best thing would be to live either on top of the mountain or on, on further down on, on the mountain itself. Uh, people coming from other countries visiting Tvergasen think that there are many huts privately owned uh, on this level, but uh, there's nobody else. It's the highest privately owned hut. What you have higher is meteorological stations, etc. But it's the highest hut in the Nordic countries of Europe. Nothing like it, and uh, there are good reason for it because uh, because of the climate. I mean, uh, why should you have an Arctic climate? I mean, good, not that. But it is Hallingskalve that I'm for. It's not the Arctic climate. It's Hallingskalve. I'm obeying, obeying the urge of Hallingskalve to come. He, the impression he made was of someone vastly more alive than the average person, uh, far more joyful, and in fact very similar to the Tibetan people that I had lived with in, in the Himalayas. There's a similarity, and, and I think it has to do with that deep connection to the natural world. And so the, when you meet Arnie in person, there's a kind of playfulness that you also see, that I see, in a lot of Zen teachers, playfulness. And his playing with language, his playing with words, and his ability to engage in a, in a kind of dance with deep ecology. Dance? Yes, I would, I would say a very much a dance that he has with deep ecology, with playing with the trees, with the flowers, and with the, with the ideas. So there's an, a kind of serious lightness, which sounds paradoxical, but it's a serious lightness to his whole presentation, his whole being, the way he presents his being. And what has always impressed me very deeply about Arne is the combination of innocence with the extreme brilliance of the mind. Usually you get intelligent people becoming partly arrogant, partly self-centered, uh, but you know, they just lose the spirit of free freedom in themselves as a person. And Arne has always maintained it, yeah? He is so childlike in his enjoyment of every moment of life. Well, of course, people think it's uh, very strange how a mountain could be a, a father, but not to me at all, because 
very soon I saw that humans live in symbols, that so much of their life in, uh, really in terms of symbols. And uh, that the mountain is just minerals. That no, no culture, no exist, no old culture has seen, looked at the mountain as minerals. On the contrary, they have uh, always looked at very strong symbols. For instance, the, air, the contact between the earthly life and heaven. And gods are very rarely thought out to uh, live anywhere. They live in, the, in heaven or uh, they live on top of mountains or are mountains. So, some mountains are holy in so many cultures, and you speak to them, you ask them for good advice, and so on. Only a mountain can uh, get me that view of this fantastic horizon, and uh, where you feel also powerful at the same time as you are very, very small. And that's uh, important philosophical that the less you are in, uh, in relation to your surroundings, the, star, the stars and the mountain, the more you intensely feel that you uh, somehow symbolically get part of it, on, on, on the, you get greater, you get um, on par with it, you get uh, feel good with it. So, the more tiny you are, the more, in some sense, you are together with something great and therefore get something of that greatness. The term deep ecology or better the, to be a supporter of a deep ecology movement, that's a long term, but it's more basic. That is to join in activism to get rid of the ecological crisis, to join on the basis of your life philosophy or religion. That's to say, your motivation comes from your uh, total view or your philosophical or religious opinions so that you feel when you are working in favor of free nature you are working for something in yourself that demands such demands changes and uh, so you are motivated from what I call the deeper premises. You go all the way back, you, if we ask you, why do you do this? Why they, the supporters of the deep ecology movement do not stop with, for instance, uh, it's bad for the health, when you have such such pollution, it's bad for this, bad for that. You. Um, 